Injuries. Injuries. Everybody's got it. Injuries. I don't understand why injuries haven't been given top billing. They haven't been given the starring role in the movie of why Rangers haven't won the league in 2023, 2024. If indeed Rangers haven't won the league in 2023, 2024. And I think that the headline used from tonight is that tiny little if, that dangly little technicality of an if. That little if, it's almost the size of something you accidentally highlight something and you shrink it on a, on a Word document. And how do you always manage to just get one word in between all the masses of words on that page? And you get one tiny wee word and you manage to shrink it down to the point where you can't actually see it anymore. You just have to highlight a bit of space, like make a bit of space totally blue, and then you expand it. And maybe if you hit the rank, I'm not very good when it comes to the, the numbers, or the, the, the font sizes. And if you hit like you know, 15 or 20, whatever it is, next thing it's the biggest word in the page. It's a huge, big if in the middle of the page, which is pretty much what it'll be like uh, for the title race if Celtic go tomorrow night at Rugby Park and do what they've done the last two times they've been at Rugby Park and, and managed to lose and suddenly the goal difference is kind of wiped out and there's only three points in it going into the last two games of the season and Stephen Robinson well we did his uh, team a favour the night by helping them qualify for Europe and if he really wants to pass that interview for the Hibs job I mean becoming the first at Mirren manager in 235 years to win at Parkhead I think that's the least he could do uh, for us and for Scottish football to keep it exciting really it's been the same team winning it too often I think but uh, that's not going to happen I think maybe 22 hours Rangers have managed to put it off for uh, because I think Celtic will be three nothing up in the first ten minutes at Rugby Park and you know really Kamarnock's season is over and Derek McInnes always finds a way to annoy us. So I I, I feel as if it's all over, but the fact that Rangers have managed to delay it, you know, we've finished our penultimate game of the league season and it still ain't over. I actually find that quite laudable because of amongst other things that we're going to discuss, the number of injuries we've had this season. Injuries would be perfect, that, that, that movie, they, a perfect part for them, it's a perfect role for them it would make injuries a star, but injuries never get that movie, and uh, I'm going to drive injuries out of the business and, and let me tell you why, injuries ruined one of Rangers International PLC FC's most valuable prodigies not prodigies, prodigies, not, what are we here folks, what are we here uh, four years of pulling them out of training physiotherapy, hydrotherapy aromatherapy hundreds and thousands of dollars, but um, let me be even more frank with you so you know I'm not a hard-hearted man and it's all about XGs and assists. He was beautiful. They could beat four Belgians in his own half without touching the ball. He could score from his own half. He could uh, spin in a dime to score. You're only winner against Spanish opposition on Spanish soil in nearly 70 years of European football. He scored in an old firm game with his boobs. He was the most unrelentingly multi-talented striker I've ever seen playing for Rangers and I've seen them from all over the world and along comes Ockin Howie with its olive oil bombs and its plastic pitches and he runs off with it and he pulls his hammy before he gets to the, the gates and he actually hyper extends it a bit under his knee as well so again that was him for months uh, he threw it all away just to make me look ridiculous and supporters in my position can't afford to be made to look ridiculous. So you get the hell out of here. And you tell that Goomba mainstream media, if you're going about mentality again, I ain't no band leader. Um, I don't like it. It's mentality is what I'm trying to say. How you doing, folks? This is your Jersey immediate post match reaction pod coming to you in association with Forest Engineering and Forest Precision Engineering. Uh, he says, ironically, being, you know, that's quite, that's quite metatextual. I wasn't being precise when I said Forest Precision Engineering and football prizes. Go out and get yourself some thick black frames with the glass so dark they won't even know your name because the choice is up to you. They come in two classes rhinestone shades and cheap sunglasses. I am talking to you after Rangers beat Dundee by five goals to two in tonight's SPFL Premiership match at Ibrox. The last game played at Ibrox this season. The last time will be in Ibrox outside the, the celebrations for winning the title next Saturday and uh, the Scottish Cup final completing the treble the Saturday after that. The last game that we'll see at Ibrox this season and <laughs> I was bumping into Arthur there for East Cobride and uh, Mr Pettigrew for Socrates, a nice guy for Socrates, uh, unbelievable, you know, I never thought I'd, never thought I'd see the day, but once he, he had to mention the Junior Cup win, of course, didn't he, you know, had to get up the Rovers straight away, I mean, get up boys, it was 100 years ago, um, but after that, it was very nice about the pod, very nice about Saturday's post-match reaction, um, but I had to apologise to both of them for making it 51 minutes long, you No, know, we'll try to get rid of the Celtic fans, and of course, a lot of Celtic fans ended up they're being really, really nice about Saturday night's pod, but no, they're not in a good mood, so you can't really trust that, Um uh, but I, I thought you deserve a, a shorter pod tonight. The problem is the amount of injuries and changes and substitutions and goals and incident and what we, what I think Rangers thought was a, a pretty meaningless match 
uh, that would take about uh, 52 minutes to describe that and uh, the score was 5-2. I went to some sort of strange metatextual symbolic stuff tonight, sorry about that folks, I don't really know what's going down, it's been a long hard season uh, and that seemed to be reflected. Uh, today. I'm going to go back to the, the press conference, the pre-match presser yesterday, I don't blame the you know, the mainstream media boys, the fan media boys, uh, I, you know, I am fan media, you know, I'm the boy, obviously, um, uh, I don't mean that in a, in a pronounced sort of way, I'm a, I'm very much involved with fan media, uh, lucky enough to be so through Jersnet, but uh, I'm not really interested in being in there, okay, all right, they're, they're no interest in having me inside the media room just because that time I threw my pants uh, at John Brown, he was just walking past, he just got into hospitality, you know, but I just, I got this love bomber, you know, and then there was that time uh, where I got a Kamara roof, um, and I just, 15 minutes before I could actually open my mouth, you know, and I just said, Kamara, I love you. And they, they, they kind of got me out there. And it, it was decided it wasn't it, it was uh, in everybody's in, in anybody's interest really for me to be involved in the pressers. But I am involved in fan media. I do understand why uh, all the boys in yesterday's press conference had to ask about mentality because the fans want to know about the Rangers players' mentality and they've got to ask the questions that the fans want answers to. So I really don't understand why the fans think it's mentality. You know, I do really okay. But, you know, you play Celtic four times in a season. Uh, we don't beat them in a uh, game. We're two and a half down to them three times. But uh, none of them, we never get thrashed off them in any of the games. It's you know, single goal losses in three of them. Uh, a draw in the other. So, yeah. You can put that down to mentality, but you look at our injuries. I don't see why mentality doesn't get the starring role. At least maybe the you know, joint credit. What is it you say? We top billing, joint top billing uh, in the movie of why we haven't, if we haven't won the league this season. Um, it's a bit, look, it's a, like, there's a film I saw years ago, it's about 29, 30 years ago, this film. It's, it's set in LA and it's like a crime saga. Uh, and it was starring De Niro and Pacino. Heat, I think it's Heat it's called. And the whole thing with that is uh, the, the two of them, the, the two protagonists, two protagonists. No, protagonists actually, um, you know, when folk talk about protagonists, the plural, that's, 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 that's technically incorrect because the protagonist is supposed to be the main character. But Heat's one of the films where you've got you know, joint leads, if you like, because the, the characters, the roles they're playing, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. You know, uh, that they both got their own codes, they both got their own problems with their love life and that because they both give so much to their job. One's a robber, one's a policeman. And you've got the whole thing where you have to get their names and the credits. They're, they're both in the screen at the same time. And their agents probably fought over who was on the left hand side and who was on the right hand side when the credits come up at first, no De Niro and Pacino. But I think maybe Michael Beale could cr could claim at least a joint top billing in the movie of why Rangers haven't won the league, if we haven't won the league in 2023, 2024. When you look at the pre-season he didn't give us and the, the squad he gave us uh, with the money he was given uh, back in the pre-season, this is not the board's fault. This is not the board's fault. Uh, they backed the manager, we wanted the manager backed. We were all screaming during the summer, no, announce Dessers, announce Lammers, don't pretend you weren't because I was doing it as well. Uh, don't leave me dangling here, folks. And, uh, but I think the manager, the current manager, coming in, changing the manager at any point during the season, uh, is always going to be, no Scottish top flight has ever been won by a team who changed their manager during that season. And I think for uh, Philip Clement to have to, to come in and take over what he took over, never mind having to take over, not mid-season, October, though, it's all during the season. It's a bit of a miracle that we're sitting here um, and there's, we've only got one game left to play and it's still on. Now, technically speaking, it is still on. We've kept it going right down to the wire. And let's be honest, other than the season, we romped the league in 21 since we come back up into the top flight. This is the closest it's been. This has actually been a race. Um, yeah, we chucked it, etc., etc. But I think that's that's all that's all part of how it works. Uh, if you're going to turn it into any kind of race, if you're going to try and represent yourself as positively as possible, you never just do it by getting closer and closer, then running out of time. You always go over and look like you're going to win it, and then you don't. Um, I get why people were asking Clement yesterday about the mentality thing, but he actually offered up an almost salacious "come get it, lads" kind of you know tabloid furtive tones. Yet another little nugget about the medical side of things, about the injuries, about why so many players are out all the time. I, mean, I don't think for a second that we actually that the injury list. Well, we included the suspended John Lundstrom in, in yesterday's nine players who are listed missing. 
Uh, we also kind of disingenuously included Bailey Rice and Danilo, who, you know, one hasn't been involved at all really this season, and the other one hasn't really been quoted in press conferences, and the other one is. Uh, you know, he's, he's been so badly injured that nobody's expecting really to see him. We'll be lucky to see him on the bench of the cup final. So I think it's all a bit disingenuous. But you're looking at a good half a dozen players there uh, who are missing. And he said that thing again. He said two or three times, ah, we know what the problem is. We've worked out what the problem is with the injuries. I think I think previously he was saying, oh, we don't know what the problem is, but he's saying it very pointedly like he was looking into it. Well, what took what the problem is and uh, well, what, what is the problem? I oh, don't want to discuss it. And everybody's like, all right, OK. You know, where is the mentality thing? No matter how many times him or Cyril Dessers said, how many times Clermont or Cyril Dessers said, it's no mentality. I don't think it's mentality. I, but is it mentality? You know, because everybody wants to know if it's mentality that you can't beat Celtic, that you can't win this league. You know, um, I, I don't know why the the, the fitness thing, the, the reasons behind the players being injured, that, that wasn't prosecuted more by the attending journals, but. There you go. That's just that's they're only acting it on behalf of the fans, and to me, it's just it's just so obvious. It's just so Celtic can pick out the same team most weeks to get their key players back in time, um, and even just having your players fit allows those players to you know, to gel together more solidly, to get used to playing with each other. It creates you know little extras on top of the sheer fact that you've got your best players playing all the time. It creates that extra familiarity that gives you an extra yard or whatever. I mean, as I've gone out there, absolutely falling to pieces eh, on Saturday in terms of the, the fitness of our players and, and our roster. And there have been two goals down, yeah, straight, you know, within well, 35 minutes of the Celtic get their first goal. But you're, you're two goals down, and then you pull one back straight away, and then we go down to 10 men, and it's, you know, it's a struggle and what have you, but we hold them off, and it ends up you look like going to score an equaliser. And this is the second time we've done that at Parkhead this season. Um, we, we did equalise against them uh, took the lead against them uh, no we, took, we equalised against them twice in the, in the game at Ibrox these are all under Clermont but again you know, we've players players dropping like flies all season so I don't I don't see there being any I, I think that's the main reason for me that is the main reason we haven't if we haven't won the league other than changing the manager and what that manager did to us and I think what the manager what Michael Beale did to us is leading it seems to me Clermont is hinting that that's led to so many injuries. Like the game tonight, eh, it was really weird for me. I don't know. I'll run this past you. I've tried. I was talking. I was talking to the boys when about me about it, and um, the guy sits in front of me, Billy, a lovely fella. He's saying he said it to me. Thank God, because I didn't want to pause at this because I haven't seen a lot of it on social media. But <laughs> we got night. We beat the D five nothing at Dens Park earlier in the season. And as I say, I don't think that Sterling. Uh, who else? There's a couple others injuries. Uh, people listed as being injured tonight that I didn't think were actually injured. They're just being rested ahead of the Scottish Cup final, really. Um, which I think is really weird. <laughs> when the league is kind of up, still up for grabs. The Celtic, we, we, I say we fully expect Celtic to, to wipe the floor with Kilmarnock tomorrow night and St Mirren on Saturday. But I don't know. It, it just seems like you're kind of surrendering it. By and the atmosphere tonight, certainly amongst the the fans, those who did turn up, I don't know what the official crowd was tonight, but it was one of those nights. It was, it kind of summed up how everybody's feeling. It was, it's been sunny, you know, and it is warm, but it's raining, and you're having to put on, you know, these kind of outer clothing, uh, waterproof garments, and that's making you sweaty, especially if you're as fat and old as me. Uh, making you uncomfortable, but then there's room to spread out because every second seat was empty in the night, and then you're noticing the seats around about iBooks that have got the that have been sunblasted, they're kind of off blue, they look a bit stained, a bit old, and everything just felt meh nah, the night. But Rangers officially, and you know, from the manager downwards and upwards seem to have the same attitude that everyone was just, ah, that's it done, that's it by way. And I find that really, I find that really weird. It's not that, I'm, I'm sorry to go on like this, but. Um, I, can I, no, I, I bite a laugh yesterday, it was a weird thing um, I did that podcast, I said the post-match reaction pod on Saturday there after the Old Firm defeat and I just did a whole rambling thing at the beginning you know, deliberately, this time I'm just doing it naturally this this is me, I, th I think I'm on point tonight Yeah. Um, so I was deliberately rambling on uh, Saturday at the start of that podcast so you can imagine how horrendous that sounded and I just, as a kind of like gallows humour saying, oh I fully expect um, you know, Rangers. If we if we pump Dundee, you know, by five goals on uh, Tuesday night, and they've scored five goals against them. If we pump Dundee by five goals on Tuesday night, and then, then you know Celtic lose by one goal, or we pump, that's the goal difference wiped out. There's only three points in it, and uh, you know St Mirren with their fantastic. Just to make sure everybody knew I was joking. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> since St Mirren, as you know, they've got a fantastic record at Celtic Park. That's the last team Celtic would want to be playing when they have to win a game at Celtic Park. And I don't know, I, I, this boy had uh, a Celtic boy, you know, his, his things all laughing emojis and tricklers. He's retweeted that little section right at the, the start of my video and he's saying, I found a hun who actually thinks I'm still going to do it. <laughs> And I realised pretty quickly what it is, is he's what to, that's what it would take for us to do it. And he's kind of shy at himself and he's thought, I better keep. <laughs> if I laugh in his face and I just shout it down, it's, it's not going to happen. Can't, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. He's going to win the league. But um, I think it's, I quickly worked to it. He was young. He's just a young fella. Because um, he asked me a few other things. I thought, no, you've never heard that kind of stuff before. And I realised what it is. is like I grew up in an age where... Uh, he think I was saying to him, do you not realise, I said to another Celtic boy that was trying to tell him, no, he's, he's joking, mate, he's joking. I was trying to say, does he not realise that we think about St Mirren going to Celtic Park the same way Celtic fans will think about, you know, Hearts playing Rangers, they think that the Jambos always lie down to us. Um, and the guy's like, no, and this, it, it was in his wee video that the fella that was having a problem with me, that was trying to slag me, was flashing up the stats for St Mirren going to have got a terrible record at Parkhead, and that's, kind of, that's, that's why I was making the, the joke. But then, he probably thinks it's Aberdeen that we feel are the team that Celtic uh, that always lied on to Celtic, because when I, it's just shown my age. Because when I was a kid, Aberdeen, I mean they tanked Celtic nearly as often as they tanked us in the, the 80s. You no, know, Aberdeen 70s, 80s. They had a fantastic record uh, against Rangers at Ibrox. Uh, they, we beat them once at Petodre in 12 years when I was growing up. Aberdeen, yeah. Um, and Celtic would go up to Petodre and went up there occasionally. But they did a terrible record against the United when we had a great record against you. you know, this is the new firm. I grew up in the new firm age I'm talking about. Um, and it was in that era that Rangers fans, you know, Aberdeen, well, not a joke against Celtic. Aberdeen would, all, would be um, win more games against Celtic than, than they would lose. It was St Mirren. St Mirren were the team that would always like it. And famously, the 85-86 season when Hearts chucked it in the last day of the season. The day Walter Smith and Graham Soonis were presented to the Rangers crowd as a new management team. We were playing Motherwell at Ibrox. Um, and Hearts just had to avoid a kind of, you know, uh, a, a, any kind of defeat to Dundee at Dens Park. And they lost 2-0 and Celtic had to you know, win 5 nothing, And they did you know, against St Mirren at Love Street. And that was... But usually it was Celtic going, uh, St Mirren going to Celtic Park was a total joke. They would always lose there. I mean, basically, we're them, you know, treat them as a Celtic reserve. So he probably didn't realise this. He didn't realise this, uh, that, that we know uh, St Mirren have a terrible record at Parkhead. And it was a joke. But then the night, the next couple of days, I started to think, I convinced myself. Not that it was possible, but that we should set ourselves up knowing that it was possible. You know, knowing that we could at least put the fear in. That, that, that's your job uh, in the league. But... <laughs> is to make sure that we keep Celtic honest as the expression goes, hey, you just said and done. No, we should go out the other night and do what we've got to do to make sure Celtic have got to win the league. Plus, you don't want to surrender it. You know, I, I know leagues are won and lost over the course of a whole season and, and a lot of our fans are really determined that we chucked it, you know, in um, March and April. We lost it in March and April. Chucking it is... Uh, that's, that's unfairly laced with uh, that mentality, accusation, that, that, that phraseology, as far as I'm concerned. But... I, feel, I just feel as if I feel as if we. It's difficult way, difficult way to say this. Our fans had given up last week. You know, my, my fellow fans, me, I'm a fan. The approach to the game at Parkhead, I, I feel as if everybody was so busy protecting their emotions that it ended up kind of maybe sending Rangers there with a bit of negativity because the players read. The play, and I'm doing that same thing as everybody else. I just want to find one answer. I want to find one reason that things have gone wrong. For me, it is the injuries, but. Um, and I think you know, the hangover from 2012, that's a multifaceted problem there. It's a legacy problem that's going to take us years to get over yet. And, and we're fighting our way through that. But I feel as if a lot of the fans were so down in the team last week, almost embarrassed. I saw guys make, making comments about how they weren't even going to watch the game. And um, Lundstrom, it was like Lundstrom was a, a kind of self fulfilling prophecy. He, he's been bad at Parkhead, he's, he has had a lot of bad games against Celtic. But that that was beyond bad. That was like a guy who sat there reading. I know people are determined that he's checked out. He wants to go to Trab's on sport. He always lets us down. You know, two and a half done to Celtic at Parkhead and he scored the own goal then he gets himself sent off. Or two and a half done the night to Dundee with it. John Lundstrom on the park. The game before, the, the, the game last week, uh, last Sunday against Kilmarnock at Ibrox, Lundstrom set up two of our goals and uh, set up the move that got the, the Kilmarnock player sent off. 
to, to put as a man up to help us dominate that game and he was getting zero credit whatsoever. He was still getting told he was shite and all that. And I don't know if he's read all this stuff or he's picked up on it and it's it's sent him into the minute we went up, the minute we went a goal down uh, at Parkhead, he's he's got himself so worked up that he's ended up, you know, putting the ball on the back of his own net. I'm quite sure he didn't want to have that in his C V. Uh, no matter how little he wanted to try, if that is the case against Celtic at Parkhead. And then for me the, the sending off it's just a case of him trying desperately to to reclaim some sort of energy, some sort of trying to make up for that that own goal. Um, I don't know. I, I feel as if we were so down on ourselves last week. And then talking about how John Lundstrom was kind of going to give up. He was like being a man down anyway. And then we've kind of gave up tonight. You know, we've, we've decided to surrender the title. And the fans were in no way. There was no, you know, people were talking about protesting tonight. And I saw that the Union Bells walked out uh, right at the end. Um, there was no... No kids and all that getting brought out in the park tonight. No extended lap of honour. But I, I ended up because we won the game. I stayed. And, you know, I love these guys. I love the players. I love Rangers. Uh, you give them a wee a bit of applause around the park, and that's you off to, to to say goodbye to this beautiful stadium of us uh, for another season. But yeah, the Union Bears, they they walked out. That was like, the closest I saw to any kind of active protest. Uh, and I don't know the the politics. Maybe the Union Bears were protesting something else. Um, maybe they've got a beef with something else. But. I, I think mostly it was just lethargy tonight. Folk were like to stay home and watch you know, Spurs against Man City or something. I, I, I just felt as if it, the, the whole atmosphere was really weird. We seemed to have kind of given up. And I'm quite convinced that Philip Clement didn't have to make so many changes tonight. I'm quite convinced that the likes of Sterling and that aren't injured. They're just uh, being rested. And I, I, I felt as if it was weird. But in the end up, we probably got the kind of score I would have wanted us to get. You know, we're a full team. Uh, with as many as many of our first team players as possible in the park. The changes were uh, manifold. Jack Butland did remain in goals. Uh, Tav, the captain, he's playing right back. Uh, ben Davis remained in defence again. He's, I mean, he, his fitness must still be seriously questionable. Uh, but he, he stayed centre half because we've got so few options at centre half these days. And um, oh, uh, Leon King, he came in beside him for a, a rare start. We had Yilmaz in at left back, a guy I don't, in my uh, emotion addled summing up of the game on Saturday. I completely forgot, obviously, that the big news wasn't that Yilmaz, it wasn't that Barisic stayed at left back because Sterling couldn't play there because he had to go in the wing. It was, Yilmaz was an option because he'd played against Kilmarnock, but um, yeah, I think his fitness has still been questionable. He's coming back from what's turned into a long term injury. Uh, so he's in at left back tonight, and I start for Ridvan Yilmaz um, in midfield. No John Lundstrom, so Raskan, who is not up to speed by any manner of means and a few floating appearances we've seen from him. Uh, but he came in to, to, to start the sitting two alongside Diomande and we had, at that point, it gets a bit more familiar. We've got Dessers uh, playing the striker role, Silva on the left-hand side, Cantwell at 10, and Ross McCausland starting uh, out in that right hand of the attacking three. So, uh, fair enough. I think it, it, it was more you're looking at the bench and seeing you know, Cole McKinnon and you know, Alec Lowry on the bench, you know, Kamar Roof, oh my God, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and Young, uh, oh, who else, Robbie, Fraser, um, aye. So it was, you know, the, the bench was really thin, but then the squad, the, the, the first team uh, wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but uh, you've got like, no Sterling and obviously Suter and all that are missing. Anyway, sorry folks, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of steam here, seriously running out of steam, just like Rangers. Uh, we... Started kind of huffing and puffing, um, generally on top of the game. I think Yelmaz is a shot few outside the box. Ross McCausland kind of cuts across the box and fires one, and the goalkeeper saves. Then were getting on the part. They seem to be consistently fouling Todd Campbell from behind, and then doing the old dive, dive. And I can see for them, my, you know, at my right, the corner of my right eye, Chris Sutton is sitting just uh, at the the west the east enclosure in the wee sky box. I can see him. And I'm thinking, this is you, this is you, you bastard. <laughs> you know, it, Players feel they can foul Todd Cantwell from behind with impunity. And it's a big thing for Cantwell. I was critical of his comments uh, on social media and I can understand why the manager didn't play him, but it was one of the first things, one of the first things we, uh, you know, I spoke about when I got into the, the stadium the night with uh, my neighbours was the fact that we, Tom Lawrence just wasn't fit enough. He just wasn't fit enough to start that game at Parkhead. Uh, Cantwell would have been better off in there, but I don't, you don't know what's going to be behind the scenes. I think the manager's trying to 
Carrot and Stick, and he's kind of straight to squash Todd Cantwell while at the same time telling him he could make him a star if he just did what he's tilt. But uh, tonight he ran the show, Cantwell, really, and Silva I thought did okay as well. He, he really, he had Dundee's left hand side or Dundee's right hand side on toast when he was going down our left in, in the first half. Then he got into a bit of an altercation with one of the players who was uh, offering them the square go in the tunnel uh, after the game or at half time. And he did, maybe I just imagined it, but he seemed to kind of, you know, quieten down a bit after that. And then Dundee scored twice. And it was like a, you know, Jack Butlin's kind of caught out unbalanced by one of the shots it kind of takes an awkward bounce and he's unsighted I think for the other one they both creep into the same corner it was just balls into the box it was car crash stuff um, and we've gone two goals down again and against Dundee Dundee took the lead against us in that game at Christmas time as well and then we scored three goals in short order in the first half that night and then Dundee they, 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 they get the man sent off in that game and it's like the Chief who was just get sent off in that game yeah so we're kind of hanging on, not hanging on, but we had to kind of manage it in the second half. We went 3-1, we beat them 5 nothing at Denzel. We did that, that critical, you know, could be the most disastrous result of the whole season, that 0-0 at Dens Park that's uh, confirmed that we were second favourites in the title race, just as it was coming to a boil. And then here today, they've been 2 nothing up, and we've, we've ended up putting five goals past them. And I think if we hadn't got the goal right in the stroke of half time, we'd have been in real trouble. A goal that sums up um, Ross McCausland, I think, and a goal that sums up what the attitude should be. You never give this shit up. You know, um, I, I can't really remember what happened in the build up, but the, the two Dundee defenders seem to be escorting the ball quite comfortably back to the goalkeeper. But Ross, we Ross just get in there and he's bugging them, he's persistent, and he sticks a leg right through between the two defenders and he puts the ball clean through the Dundee goalkeeper's legs at the back of the net and we've scored right in the stroke at half time. But they still get booed down the tunnel at half time because I don't even know why, because it just seemed to be. This is what we'd ask for with the whole attitude and the build-up to this game from the fans and from the club. Uh, the only interest that was going to be shown tonight was a kind of negative interest, it felt. And I'm thinking, we're surrendering the league to Celtic. We're surrendering the league to Celtic. I'm going to have to get the shades on. Not because I'm going to be ashamed to show myself as a Rangers fan. They know the Union Jack t-shirt and the orange shorts and red and black socks up to my knees. I kind of give the game away, even though I'm wearing uh, cheap sunglasses. But it's more just so they don't see the hatred in my eyes or the, the tears rolling in my eyes as they're setting up a fireworks and the flares. I've parked the car just in for the, the, the tall cranes. I'm expecting like a St. Patrick's Day style banger to be shoved up the exhaust when I get back there. But... We come out in the second half and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Uh, short order, there's a, a ball to the back post from Cantwell in the left-hand side. Big Dessers gets up at the back, uh, the back post, bang, proper Derek Johnson type goal. Uh, that's two each and, you know, you know a draw is still no use to us in terms of keeping the, you know, keeping the league alive. And uh, what happened next? Oh, I can't... Uh, can you really remember how we took the lead? Oh, that's right. It was the goal of the season. It was a total wonder goal. Or was it a complete fluke? Todd Cantwell, right in front of me. Um, on, he's up the right-hand side. He's got the shiny orange boots on as well. The uh, right-hand side. And it looks like he's trying to whip in another fierce type ball to the back post. The fact that he's already done it from the other wing for the first goal we scored in the second half maybe gives the game away. But I, I watched the replay up on the big screens. And it's like, I think he might have meant it. I think he might have meant it. 10 out of 10 um, for the shot and for putting it into the, the back of the net over the goalkeeper from the, the, out in the wing. Absolutely sensational goal in the end up. But I think it's uh, 11 out of 10. If he didn't mean it, it's 11 out of 10 for the celebration. But he just like turned around. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Praise me. Totally meant it. Cool as you like. Um, if he's faking it, it was top fakery. And uh, that bird's... That bird's get out of his cage and he flew. I was giving Todd a hard time uh, on the pod the other night. Um saying why I didn't think he should have played against Celtic at Parkhead and he's been out and he's rammed it down everybody's throats tonight so well played to him um, that, that, bird, that bird certainly flew tonight and that one flew right at the top corner so that's your, your 3-2 up and you're thinking okay um, we're winning now but you always worry when you've started the game so poorly how many times was that three times against Celtic that's us against Dundee I suppose Aberdeen beat us 3-1 didn't they but we've been doing there can't be many seasons that Rangers have been two goals down so often Um it's quite a thing, and you're thinking you started so badly, you might get yourself back into position, then you start, to, you're so relieved, but the undertow is there. You start thinking, oh, we've got this game one, and the, the relief actually you know, relaxes you too much, and the undertow is there, and I thought there's going to be some squalid, risible, miserable little 
sclaffed equaliser in injury time and that's it. The, the league will have been handed to Celtic. Uh, Ibrox didn't want that, so I wanted that extra goal, that bit of leeway. And on comes Scott Wright, who obviously can smell Hamden around the corner, his, his stage, you know. And he did, I mean, it was a hell of a lot of substitutions. We took off, oh, what did we take off? Ridvan went off. Uh, on came the, the young boy. Is it Robbie Frey? Oh, that's terrible. I'm forgetting his name. I couldn't get Ben Davis's name tonight. I think it's the, the Alzheimer's are sitting in, or it's just this season. Um, I Cole McKinnon came on and Tav for a wee while went into centre half. You know, uh, who else come on? We had other changes in, in midfield. Roof comes on for Dessers. Scott Wright comes on for Silver went off as well. He played well, Silver. At a lot of moments, it, it, it was untidy, but he persisted. You know, a lot of times there was nobody in the box, you know, making the moves he needed. And a lot of times his, his final product wasn't good enough. I still think he likes to go down. He think a wee moment where he's more concentrating on going down for a penalty than actually finishing the ball that came to him. But nah, he, he gave us the energy and the, you know, the out ball and the control of the ball that we really needed to. They eventually worked in D into the ground wearing the kind of Spurs tribute strip, although close up it's got that wee light blue stripe. I think that's for the first team. It's the Dundee were formed out of two teams merging. Is it our boys? There's something to do with boys, one of the teams. And I I think for a second or two I thought it's because they signed all those Argentinian players uh, in the kind of two thousands that they were that's why they used to wear an Argentina style away strip, but that was that was the, the strip of the one the teams that merged to formed in D. So they've always had the, the light blue thing going on, is it kind of light blue and white stripes? And they're a wee miniature um single kind of down one side of the strip, a couple of wee thin stripes, uh, light blue. Quite a smart quite a smart kit, and I got to enjoy that, uh, particularly after Scott Wright fired one in. Uh, was it three minutes to go. It was a ball to the back post. I don't know who played the ball across, forgive me. Kieran Dill, he came on as well. And uh, Scott takes it first time, bounces it into the ground. Ugly finish, but a great finish, you know, an effective finish. And that was a total relief. We won this game. I can remember enjoy the last two minutes of the game at Ibrox and three minutes into injury time. Uh, he got another one, did Scott, and that was it. It was 5 2 to the Teddy Bears. We did not surrender the league tonight anyway. You can make up your mind. Everybody's obviously thinks we chucked it over. March and April, but as I say, if you look at the injury list and the players that we kept losing consistently, and even we things like corner goals and have to play against Dundee when we want to get Lee and Balligan in, but Balligan was sick and stuff like that, and that made, it made a difference that night. There's the fact you can get to the point where you can nail it down to particular instances. One more goal here, one more goal there would have made a difference, I think, in a season where we've changed the manager. Um, and as I say, we've got this whatever the hell's going on with the injuries. I think that's okay, you know. That's 32 minutes, folks. Have I got anything else to say? No, just tune in to Jersnet on Friday night. I don't even know who's doing it. Sorry, I'm uh, all over the place tonight. Very, it is emotional, I think, when you go to iBooks for the last game of any season. But this one, I, I felt a real pride tonight. Uh, when you think of the games, the, the humiliations, the, the team being booed off the park a few times in the early part of the season, we got a wee reprise of that, unfortunately, this evening uh, at half time, and they've come out and they've responded, you know, scoring four goals in the second half, five straight goals to respond to Dundee's two. You're thinking, we're just going to let this fritter away and and we're just going to piss it all away, uh, let them just have the league uh, without having to kick a ball tomorrow night. But I think we showed um, that we've got the right mentality. We didn't let that happen, and it was in the end a nice way uh, to check out of a, another season um, at this beautiful Archibald Leach uh, of a stadium. It's an, I, I, I love Ibrox. It is it is our palace, and I'll be sad to not go for a few months over the summer. Um, but it's on to Tyne Castle, and then on to Hamden for remaining business. We'll be uh, say previewing the the Tyne Castle trip. On Friday night, uh, I'll be giving you a wee post-match reaction to that on Saturday. So please come back and join us then. And um, tomorrow, you wake up in the morning, the, the light hurts your head. The first thing you do when you get on out of bed is you hit those streets are running and you try to beat the masses. Go and get yourself some cheap sunglasses.